Hello everyone, how are you all doing? So you have just entered MBBS, I suppose because you're clicking on this video. So first of all, many, many congratulations. You're officially stepping into the world of medicine and trust me, this journey is going to be life changing. You have made it till here and you should be proud of yourself. MBBS is a wonderful journey. So before I start the video, I would want to talk to you about a few things. Now, if you're coming to MBBS, I would really want to be clear with your goals. Are you just here because you want to just pass your exams? You just want to ace it or you are really here because you want to be a competent doctor. In my opinion, your goal should be to become a competent doctor. Okay. You should not just come into MBBS because you want to do time pass or you just want to leisure around. Yes, there are many occasions where you will leisure around, you'll have plenty of time, but you cannot waste your time in MBBS. Okay, you have to think rationally, you have to act rationally. Okay, now coming to the subjects in the first year. So the first year, it is all about preclinical subjects. Preclinical subjects are those in which you do not have a direct patient interaction, but it aids all the clinical uh, fields that you will further study in your coming years. Now if I talk about the first year of MBBS, you'll have to deal with anatomy, physiology and biochemistry mainly. Now, anatomy, if I talk about anatomy, anatomy is the vast. It is very, very, very vast anatomy. If you compare it to physiology and biochemistry, it's really very vast. And this is the subject that if you do not study properly, it will really haunt you before your prof exams, right? Anatomy, it is going to be a very first subject. And trust me, you will feel that it is very huge at first. But do not worry, because in this video, I'll break it down for you how anatomy is divided. What are the books? What are the apps in the, that you need to follow? By the end of this video, you'll have a mini roadmap. That if you follow, I'm sure you're going to ace your MBBS exams. Now, if I talk about the parts of anatomy, it is divided into histology. Histology is basically what we see under the microscope. Suppose we take a scraping of the skin, we prepare the slide, we see it under a microscope and then we see, okay, so these are the structures that we are seeing. If I come to embryology, it is all about your fetal life. How were, you, uh, how were your organs when, we, when you were in your fetal life? How was the heart developed? How was it formed? How did the brain develop? When did the brain develop? It is all about that. If I talk about gross, so gross, it has upper limb, lower limb, thorax, abdomen and pelvis, head and neck. Now coming to general. General, most people, they generally skip general anatomy. But remember one thing, whether it is anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, or even your subjects in the second year, general, it is at most important. You cannot skip your generals because that would mean that you're skipping your basics. General will give you an edge to understand your gross very properly. Okay. So you cannot skip your generals. Please read your general. First seven to 10 days of your anatomy, your college, they are going to teach you about general anatomy. Please do not waste this time. If I come to neuroanatomy, it is the toughest of all, right? So most people feel that neuroanatomy is very tough and it is very hard. What do you, do you need to do for neuroanatomy? You have to visualize it, right? You have to make diagrams as much as you can. And if you're listening in the classes, okay, you have to come home and read neuroanatomy the same day. You cannot leave neuroanatomy for the last or else you're not going to understand anything. Now, if I come to, now you'll have dissection classes. Okay. So there will be at least four dissection classes per week, two hours each. Again, starting, starting, everyone will you, of you will be very excited. Okay. We are going to dissect a cad word and all. Some are going to faint also because in my college people did faint. But again, the and through the zeal, it really goes down with the number of months that you have spent in the anatomy department. If you are to take any of my advice, please take this advice that do not skip your dissection classes. Anatomy, I repeat, is all about visualization. The more you visualize, the more you know the subject properly. So what happens is that you are taught a topic in the class, okay? For example, I am talking about upper limb. You are taught about the arm region, you are taught about brachial plexus and all, okay? Now, in your dissection classes, you go to your dissection classes and then your teacher, she will teach you or you'll have to refer to a dissection book and then you will dissect that particular part. So, whatever you have learned in your theory classes, you will see that the structures are exactly like that. There could be some changes, but more or less it is the same. 
so that gives you a better representation okay now if your dissection classes if phones are allowed in your dissection classes take a picture of it and then you can add it to your notebook right so that gives you an edge basically jo cheez tum dekhe ho tumhe wo zyada yaad rehta hai okay so if you are studying it in the morning and seeing it in the evening in your dissection classes trust me you'll remember it more trust me your concepts would be clearer now there's a rule in dissection classes respect the cadaver do not fool around treat the dissection hall as a temple dissection hall is the temple of your learnings okay do not mess around in the dissection classes girls tie your hair properly keep your nails cut you'll have to please wash your hands before and after dissection take your dissection kit which includes scalpel scissors forceps okay it is very useful do dissection and continue doing it you'll learn a lot now coming to osteology osteology is all about bones so basically most of you will buy a bone set in the bone suppose if i talk about femur so you'll be given a femur femur you'll have to describe its positions okay its relations how to hold it in an anatomical position its relations and then what are the structures that pass near to it from it etc so basically you'll have to know everything about a bone that is important for you as a doctor because your aim is to become a doctor right so the so the bones that you really need to know if you're not studying every bone it is femur okay it is your pelvic bone it is your scapula Okay, and these are atlas axis. Ah, uh, you should know your ribs also. Okay, and you should know your ankle. Ankle is a hot topic in Viva. Okay, now if I talk about books, which most of you would be very interested in, in general there is BDC Anatomy of BDC Handbook of Anatomy. This is a small book. I would put pictures over here. In gross, I personally feel that Prashant Singh it is better than BDC because the picture quality is better, the text is much simplified. If I talk about neuroanatomy, Snell's book of neuroanatomy is the standard book. In embryology, Langmans is the standard book. Then, if you want to follow an Indian author, it is I B Singh. In histology, we have I B Singh, and in histology also practicals are a must. So what happens is that you learn a lot more when you see things. So in histology, you will be seeing that. Okay. and then when your teacher teaches you you can comprehend better now there are some books which are simplified enough which are used for passing the prof exams so yogesh sontake is one such book it comes of gross also of embryology also and then sn kazi is also another book but honestly i would not recommend you to use all of these initially i mean you can have a look at the end but please stick to your basic books and do not skip your general i'm repeating it again Now, if I talk about prof, you will have to learn the art of paper presentation. So, if I talk about anatomy, draw as many diagrams as you can. Diagrams are a must. Diagrams, I repeat, are a must. So, this gives your examiner a view that okay, child knows things, and he has portrayed it well. If you write long answers, nobody actually has the time to read it all through. But if you are drawing the diagram, you are giving a clear cut impression to the examiner that yes, I know it very well. Okay, and in prof exams, please do not be a miser. Please do not save pages. Okay, so write a question, leave at least two to three lines, and then switch. Okay, do not keep continuing writing in the same page, and please, please, please do not use. paragraphs write in points okay now if i have to talk about some apps so there are some apps like bio digital human 3d anatomy anatomy learning complete uh, anatomy 3d atlas complete anatomy so these are apps that would help you in better visualization so these are 3d apps like if you download them you can easily visualize a uh, model okay so i used this app i have used everything but i don't know this was a comfort app this was a go to app it also has its website so you can uh, either use it in web or you can download the app it's a nice app okay and also anatomy by elzevor it is another app it's nice 
uh, I guess it is anatomy 3D at least only. Now, if I have to talk uh, to you about practicals, so in your practicals exams, you will be having a section of histology. So in histology, you will be given a slide, you'll have to identify it, then you'll have to write some features about this slide, and then you'll have a viva in which the teacher will ask you questions related to this slide. In viva, please do not try to be over smart. Your viva is on you only. So whatever answer you give, your viva will go on that. Do not just put in words. Make sure that you know everything about what you are saying. Okay? Don't just randomly put in your words. The teacher is way more smarter than you think you are. In embryology, you could be given models or you would be simply asked questions. In gross, cadavers would be kept, bones could be kept and the structures would be flagged. Right? So, you'll have to identify the structure and again a leading question would be asked which you'll have to answer. In osteology, a bone would be given. You are expected to hold the bone in its anatomical position please do not mess up in that please hold the bone in proper anatomical position trust me i do not know that if you know anything or not like you may forget the structures you may forget the names anything but do not forget to hold it in anatomical position it's a big shame if you forget to do that okay so at least prepare the major bones that i told you in detail for grand skull is also a major bone yeah i forgot to mention it over there if I talk about grand viva, you can be asked anything, okay? Grand viva also, the HOD, he also has a cadaver with him. And then he can make you point out structures and ask you questions from that, okay? So now you see, dissection is very important, okay? So now, and for radiology, and there's also a section of radiology. It is very easy. You'll just have to say if it is anterior, posterior, posterior, anterior. It's very simplified. You'll be taught in your colleges, Okay? So this was about anatomy from my side. If you feel that I've left anything, feel that you want me to emphasize on a topic more, you want the links of the books, you want the links of the apps, please feel free to comment. I'll surely reply. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice MBBS journeys. And please try to become good, competent doctors.